All right, well, good morning, everyone. On behalf of U.S. Customs and Border Protection, Laredo Field Office, and the Laredo Port of Entry, welcome to World Trade Bridge and this morning's ribbon cutting ceremony. I am Margie Garza, Supervisory CBP Officer for the Laredo Field Office. Buenos dias y bienvenidos al Puente del Comercio Mundial. Les agradecemos que nos pudieron acompañar hoy en esta ceremonia de corte de cinta. Before we hear from our distinguished guests, will everyone please stand for the presentation of colors by the Laredo Port of Entry Honor Guard, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for the invocation by CBP Officer Ruben Tenorio. Good morning. We have a moment of silence for the victims of El Paso, please. Thank you. Please bow your head. Heavenly Father, we come to you asking you for your guidance, wisdom, and support for the newly created DAP Fast Entry Lane. Help us to engage in a fast and secure trade, which will allow us to alleviate our roadway congestion and allow us to grow closer as a group and nurture the bonds of our community. Fill us with your grace, Lord, as we make decisions that will enhance the, great, the trade community and staff. Furthermore, continue to remind us that all that we do here today, all that we accomplish is for the pursuit of the truth for your greater glory. We ask this in your name, amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Pueden tomar asiento. Right now, you are witnessing the efficient movement of trade at one of the largest inland ports in the nation. The commerce that comes through this bridge benefits the economy of our city and our country. Last month, our agency celebrated the 230th anniversary of the U.S. Customs Service the oldest legacy agency in CBP, and that demonstrates how for hundreds of years, CBP officers and Laredo Port of Entry Management have worked together with city officials, government leaders, and the trade community to improve operations at all of the Laredo Port of Entry border crossings. It is now my pleasure to introduce the Laredo Port of Entry Port Director, Mr. Albert Flores. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for being here this morning. I'm proud and honored to be here with you today. I especially want to bid a warm welcome and sincere thanks to our congressmen, City of Laredo and City of Nuevo Laredo officials, business community members, Governor of Mexico officials, and our CBP senior leadership here present. 
We are all here to applaud the team effort that has resulted in improvements which will enhance the prosperity of this community. The opening of this lane signifies the forthcoming cooperation between CBP and the City of Laredo as we move forward together in enhancing the service provided to the trade community, which is the life lifeblood of our city. We, all, we have all been working towards having this installation in place, and today we finally gather to appreciate the diligence of those responsible for this. It is with a sense of humility and gratitude that I come here today. The port has undergone unprecedented change and challenges in the last few years. This additional facility with the technology, innovation, and promise that it brings is an exciting improvement towards helping Laredo remain in the forefront of trade processing. For the city, as well as CBP, it has been a challenge in seeing this project come to fruition. Our managers have been especially engaged with our trade partners to develop innovative and efficient ways of processing our work. We are actively absorbed in improving our systems and staffing frameworks to address issues that have, cha that have challenged us in the past. We have been in close cooperation with the City of Laredo in the utilization of the Donations Acceptance Program to build four additional lanes that will service the FAST program here at the World Trade Bridge. These will allow approximately 1,800 trucks to flow directly into the Laredo Commerce unimpeded by the dwell times inside the import lot by circumventing ordinary traffic and proce process outside the facility. Today's, rim today's ribbon cutting is the beginning of that goal. We have been working closely with our field office and headquarters to realize improvements in our processing systems to enable better accountability and compliance while increasing processing efficiencies and increasing capacity of our World Trade Bridge. These efforts are honest and ongoing and we are very much looking forward to the producing real and productive outcomes. Continuing our reinforced partnerships and with our mutual interest of seeing the community grow and prosper, the next few years will, remarkable, will be a remarkable to experience. We are really looking forward to it. The Wall Trade Bridge is Laredo's trade flagship and for many years has provided economic growth and success to the entire community. We are all eager to experience the fulfillment of this potential and to invigorate Laredo as it grows and remains one of the most important CB ports in the country. Again, for all the collaborative efforts leading to this accomplishment of this initial phase of the Fast Lane project, thank you very much and congratulations on yet again another cargo infrastructure improvement for a well-deserving community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Flores. At this time, please help me welcome the City of Laredo Mayor, Mr. Pete Sines. Good morning, everyone. Buenos dias a todos ustedes. Uh, Thank you. It's, it's indeed a great day here in Laredo, Texas, a little warm like usual, but then again, it's, it's uh, August. <laughs> so this is very much uh, Laredo, Texas for, you know, for all of us here. Uh, again, uh, we have our uh, uh, Congressman Henry Cuellar. Thank you, sir, and I know you'll be speaking, and, and we have other special guests as well. We have uh, Kate uh, Flaxbart, with, uh, uh, she's a U.S. Consul uh, in Mexico, in Laredo, and of course, uh, Juan Carlos Mendoza, also a uh, General Consul. Uh, from Mexico here in the U in, in Laredo, and of course all the CBP officials, uh, port directors, uh, uh, Mr. Higgerson, uh, Mr. Crawford, uh, and uh, Mr. Skinner, and uh, Mr. Flores, and, and all of you all, uh, and of course uh, our our city managers as well. Uh, uh, thank you both, uh, Robert and, and Rosario, and, and of course we have a lot of you know, city folks as well, and of course our. No, Laredo, Mexican counterparts, thank you. Uh, welcome to, uh, to our city, and this is very much part of you uh, as well. Uh, our uh, uh, Presidente Municipal uh, couldn't make it, uh, Enrique Rivas, but he did send uh, David, David uh, Trevino, verdad? Uh, okay, yeah, thank you. Se parece mucho. So, uh, again, thank you very much, and of course, the bridge department. Uh, you know, all, all the people that are here, uh, and of course, uh, all the guests that are joining us as well. This indeed is, is indeed a, uh, in a special occasion, as I said. Uh, uh, we also do want to thank uh, the, uh, the U.S. Customs and Border Protection CBP Donations Acceptance Program, because that's, that's what made it possible for us, uh, and the uh, General Services Administration, and also welcome them as well. Uh, 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 for participating in this agreement. Uh, and again, it does take a team effort, as has been noted uh, previously. Uh, 
Now this project marks the beginning of a goal for this bridge, uh, one of many, uh, uh, one of which is the uh, free and secure uh, truck lane, uh, which is really the fast lane that you see. This is just the temporary version of it. We'll have a, a more permanent uh, relocation uh, lane uh, uh, in, in the very near future. Uh, uh, so this, this and other projects are set to alleviate the traffic, as you can see. Uh, uh, there's constant uh, you know, traffic in this bridge, uh, and this will serve to alleviate uh, truck traffic. Uh, as explained by Port Director Flores, uh, uh, this should uh, uh, loosen up some of the, uh, the traffic that goes in, in, into the uh, secondary um, uh, inspection uh, centers. Uh, uh, the, you know, we've been growing, as you know. Uh, uh, in the past, uh, they said that we were growing by 3 5 percent. I think we've grown last year alone. We grew by... You know, we exceeded that amount. As of today, uh, we have uh, calculated already a, a three percent increase over last year, uh, which is which is very good as well. Uh, you know, despite all the issues that we have at the border, uh, trade continues to grow, uh, and, and we sincerely appreciate that. Uh, uh, the importance of this port becomes more competitive day by day, uh, as, as noted. Also, uh, more than 15,000 trucks cross daily, uh, both northbound and southbound. Uh, uh, the, the, the city of Laredo, as, as some of you all may know, we did hire um, the Structural Engineering uh, Associates, Inc., which is, we call them CSEA, uh, to study and prepare construction plans and specifications for various projects dealing with this port. Uh, uh, and, and I'll list them. Uh, the, they were hired to uh, design and, and uh, for the construction of the Way in Motion, which is another component, and, and we'll be speaking to that later. Uh, Way in Motion scales at the existing U.S. Customs Exit Control booths uh, for the design and construction for the CBP 559 Donations Acceptance Program uh, DAP uh, Fast Lane Relocation, and also very important uh, for the uh, Presidential Permit Application uh, for the preparation and the coordination for the World Trade International Bridge expansion. Uh, and also the installation of new technology, uh, and I see uh, something very similar over there, if, if not the Z portal, uh, uh, for the new technology for the Z portal within the uh, lane number one of the fast lane relocation project, and also for temporary bypass uh, lane to allow for interim processing of empty uh, uh, commercial vehicles and tractors. Uh, so the funding uh, for this project is uh, from a Federal Highway Administration uh, via CB, CBI grant. Uh, that Textot is, is administering, and I see David Salazar too uh, here, uh, who's the district engineer. David, uh, thank you for joining us, and thank you for all, all the help that you give us. Uh, we appreciate that. And he's brought other you know, people from Textot. Thank you for being with us. Uh, so uh, Textot is administering this grant. Uh, the estimated construction cost uh, is uh, nine million. 124,000 uh, plus uh, dollars. The engineering costs uh, are 1,978, almost $2 million for the engineering costs for a total of, of uh, over $11 million uh, uh, for this project here. Uh, the city of Laredo has begun this process by resurfacing this area. Um, and it's, it's over, uh, I would say easily 1,000 feet in length by 26 feet in width. And, uh, and it's got a six inch uh, depth uh, of, of asphalt material. Uh, uh, this improvement was done with the help of the public works, the city, uh, uh, and the city staff. Uh, uh, the, the work began in June 13th and completing it by June 19th of uh, this year. Uh, the total cost for this project, as, as far as you know, this, the, uh, this portion here was 48,000, a little over $48,000. Uh, uh, these adjustments and renovations will allow easier uh, processing of empty trailers, uh, which amount to over 500 per day. Uh, I, I re reiterate our commitment, uh, the city's commitments to improve Laredo's infrastructure for the benefit of all, but more particularly the uh, trucking and the trade industry and the uh, processing, distribution, warehousing, uh, and all that's, that's connected. Uh, so there's a, a chain of, of uh, businesses and services that that will benefit from you know from you know this improvement that we have, uh, and then we have other improvements as well. But I'll let others you know discuss those as as uh, as the morning uh, progresses. Uh, again, thank you for your attendance, and thank you for for all the help that you give us as well. Thank you.
Thank you, Mayor. It is now my honor to welcome to the podium Congressman Henry Cuellar. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. And um, before I say anything, uh, I was looking at the agenda. I didn't see uh, Mr. Um, David Higgerson, so I'm going to ask David to come up here and join me. And I'll ask him to say a few words. Uh, first, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for, um, for David Higgerson, uh, Mr. Flores, and uh, Mr. Skinner, and everybody, Crawford, and everybody, Armando also, everybody working together, the men and women. So I'm going to give a little bit of my time to uh, Mr. Higgerson because there's a lot of things that went behind the scenes. I mean, a lot of things behind the scenes to just get, um, what was it, about a thousand uh, feet? <laughs> a lot of bureaucracy, and I say that with all due respect, uh, to just get to where we are. So we're here uh, because of the men and women in blue and the team effort, the city of Laredo, and I'm going to thank the mayor and everybody properly. But before I do this, I want to yield part of my time to David Higgerson, because I really, uh, you know, we, uh, as we got bridge one and two rehab. Uh, you know, there was work that he did behind the scenes, and uh, I think we still got one more announcement for bridge number two, so we're going to work on getting that. Uh, that's over, what is it, about $110 million uh, project for bridge one and bridge two. A lot of things that went behind the scenes that uh, got us where we are, and that's because of Mr. Higginson. Uh Just getting the bureaucracy to just get this 10,000 feet uh, done took a lot of work, and again, if it wasn't for David, we wouldn't be here. So. Before I say my, my few words, I want to have uh, David uh, say a few words. So, David, thank you again for what you've done. Uh, well, I didn't know I was going to be here, but I, I would like to like to make one small point. I, I was actually reading the Journal of Commerce the other day, and the Journal of Commerce is a highly, highly thought of magazine or newspaper that actually tracks trade all over the world. And it came up with something really interesting. It called the southern border the funnel. They essentially said, well, you know, you do about $720 billion worth of business overall with Mexico both ways. The Laredo field office, just the port of Laredo alone, does about $300 billion. But you know, southern border wide, there's only 88 lanes. There's 88 cargo lanes to handle something like $700 billion worth of trade. Does that even sound good to anybody sitting here, especially those of you amongst the trade? So the city of Laredo, and, and uh, with, with a lot of foresight, a lot of thought, this is eventually going to be four lanes. Over there you have 16 lanes. At Columbia you have eight lanes. Somebody want to calculate that real quick? At the end of the day, the city of Laredo alone owns right around 21% of every lane that enters from Mexico is, is actually here within the city of Laredo. It is more like 40% if you look at South Texas all the, all the way around. So it is incumbent upon us, as both Mexico and the United States, if we intend to, to keep this relationship growing at the 5 and 6% rate per year that we all would expect, then these lanes become critical. There, there is just not even a debate about it. I, I can't even imagine a mere 88 lane cargo lanes on the entire southern border. But we have just increased it by four. And so that, that, that is all to the good. Thank you, Congressman. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much, David. Again, thank you. Uh, uh, appreciate, uh, again, what you and your men and women in blue do. Um, and, uh, and this is why this uh, last February we added uh, resources for another 1,200, add another 1,200 uh, CBP officers uh, to make sure that ports like Laredo have the proper uh, personnel uh, on it, uh, number one. And number two, uh, I'm one of those that when you have the professionals, where's uh, Tenorio? Uh, there you are. And, and the rest of the folks, I don't think it's your job to be changing diapers or making sandwiches without due respect what's happening down in the valley. I think we can get other people. And you saw what happened when 300 out of the 545 men and women were taken down there. You saw what happened to our areas. And that's why another idea from uh, David uh, was to get what we call entry level positions. That is uh, men and women that are almost peace officers uh, will be doing that work over there 
and the professionals will be here doing the cargo inspection or if it's the men and women in blue they can be guarding the border instead of without due respect changing diapers making sandwiches and i think that can be left to somebody somebody else and again that's another example on how uh, the experience that David and the men and women in blue bring over here. Uh, so another 1,200, we're going to add more of uh, this appropriations uh, at those entry level positions uh, so our folks can be doing the work over here. We also added, I added the language on the, um, it was a low language that prevented you all to use technology. So we added that language again to move it faster on the pilot program so we can use Laredo as the pilot test uh, uh, area uh, to do that. Uh, so again, I want to thank you, David, and the men and women of Blue, and I certainly want to thank all the team players. And again, Mayor, I'm sorry, I'm going to repeat everything you said, but I think it's so important that we thank everybody. First of all, Mayor, you and the City Council have just been outstanding. Uh, so I want to thank the Mayor and the leadership that you have provided. Anytime there's an issue for Laredo, the Mayor is out there, and I want to thank you, uh, Pete, uh, for your leadership. Our co-city manager, uh, both uh, Robert and Rosario, I know they're uh, both here. I want to say uh, Robert's here, Rosario's here also. I want to thank you all also for the work that, uh, that you all do. Uh, because again, you know, in order to break the bureaucracy, and I don't want to go into the details, uh, we were able to get this done because with $48,000, I believe, uh, they were able to pay this. Otherwise, we would have waited till next year if we would have waited for the bureaucracy on it. So I want to thank the city uh, for, for doing their part. I also want to thank also the city of Nuevo Laredo. Uh, I know that the mayor's not here, but Daniel Trevino uh, is uh, present. So I certainly want to thank him also for, for being here with us and all the other officials that we have from uh, uh, Nuevo Laredo. I certainly want to thank also uh, David Salazar. Uh, David Salazar, and I'm gonna point out to a couple of things, but if anybody wants to ask him the questions, I think you need to ask uh, David Salazar, the expert, and all the folks from the uh, Department of Transportation. Uh, certainly the, the U.S. and Mexican consulate, uh, uh, Catherine and, and Juan Carlos, I want to thank both of y'all uh, for being here because again the work that you do is vitally important so I certainly want to thank uh, both uh, consulates for the work that they do uh, the trucking association the custom broker associations and I'm sorry I'm gonna probably leave somebody else uh, remind me afterwards but Arturo Dominguez uh, is here and Nesto Gaitan is also here uh, we have uh, folks from the um, uh, not only the, 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 uh, on the U.S. side, but we also have the foreign agents, uh, Gary Pedraza. Uh, we also have people from both the U.S. and the Mexican side. Again, we know why this uh, business is important, and this is why we're here today, is to make sure that we uh, keep Laredo as the number one inland port in the country. And uh, did L.A. go back on top again? Oh, okay, well, those uh, Chinese towers will probably hit soon, and we'll, put, we'll go back to number one again. Uh, but I also, you know, certainly want to thank uh, not only the city, the uh, the um, uh, the federal government, uh, our folks on the other side, the state government, uh, the private sector, because again, we're here because we all work together as a team. Uh, and I think, uh, Joe, you know this, it's, it's been a team effort uh, to make sure that we get this uh, done, but it's really exciting. Uh, we mentioned a couple of things, uh, new CBP officers that uh, have been already I think they're in the process of being hired. The entry level positions will help a lot. The new adding the language on uh, technology so we can do that fast acquisition is going to be so important also. Uh, we have joint inspections, which is again key. Laredo was the first city, the first city in the nation to have Mexican customs officials. And I think we have them at the land bridge, we have them at the rail bridge, uh, and certainly uh, we have them at the airport also. Uh, NAFTA, NAFTA will be done, guys. It will be done. It will be passed uh, probably sometime, uh, probably sometime uh, in September and October. Uh, but it will be done. Uh, last time that Nancy Pelosi was here, uh, she reminded us that she did vote for the original NAFTA. We just got to make sure we have some enforcement language, and I think we will. We're moving toward that. I know in a couple of weeks I'll be going with Kevin Brady to Mexico also to, again to uh, re-emphasize the work that uh, Mexico has done uh, on the what I call the historic labor reform that I think Americans need to give them uh, a credit because it was not easy. Politically it was hard. 
Uh, but I think it's something that Mexico has stepped forward, and I certainly want to thank them for, for doing uh, their work on, on, on that. Uh, back uh, also moving on to over here, we're here part of this because of the private-public partnership. In 2014, in the appropriations, I added language to allow us to do the public-private partnership, and we're seeing uh, what it means. Uh, back, uh, if you all remember, I brought Chairman uh, Bill Schuster uh, to uh, add a couple of things. One is add money for freight, uh, for freight, and I know the state needs to do a better job to make sure we get those freight dollars over here. But I think soon they're going to make it up in uh, some other ways, and we'll do an announcement uh, soon on that. But the other thing that Bill Schuster added was put CBI back again. As you know, they took it away, and I asked for two things from Schuster when it was down here when we were with them. One was freight money uh, for the state of Texas, and number two, add CBI money. And I think uh, most of this, David, is uh, CBI money. I think the city added their part also. So I certainly want to thank them for doing this. Uh, and, and again, what we're seeing here adds to the work that we're doing. And I'm going to step away from the mic uh, just for a second, just to point to a couple things. And again, this message is to my friends in Mexico, uh, my friends in Mexico, and of course, to our uh, American audience. Um, we want to make sure that the World Trade Bridge stays number one. But we need Mexico's part, and we need Mexico help on this. And let me explain. Uh, what I mean on this. As we're looking at expanding the World Trade Bridge, I know that our friends uh, have uh, brought up a couple of uh, um, concerns. I'll use that word very lightly. Uh, concerns on it. But I think those issues, uh, if you follow me on this, will be addressed. And I know that the mayor and, and, and the Department of Transportation have been addressing on this. So one is we got this fast lane. How many trucks are we handling now? About 600 uh, trucks a day uh, that are using this, 600 uh, 100 a day. And, and again, once we do the, the uh, we finish uh, the final product and we put the, the C portal, we add other technology, that's going to increase and that should be done by 2020, correct? By January of 2020. It, it's here, okay, the temporary on that. But once we get the permanent, we should open this up and we should have a lot more. But the other thing, Mayor, and, uh, and this is very important, and, and again, I want you to follow, and this is to my uh, friends across the, the river, I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. These are some of the obstacles that the uh, governor's office brought in from uh, on the other side. One is they were talking about this little turn over here. Remember the famous turn? Uh, this famous, famous turn would now be addressed. The, the city and the Department of Transportation uh, will be addressing this. And, and again, this turn uh, for our friends uh, in Mexico will be addressed, and that should be done rather quickly. So this little turn, what I call the famous turn, uh, will be addressed. Uh, the wind uh, here uh, will be done, and this wind, uh, the weight in motion is important because instead of having DPS over here stopping folks, this work will be done over here, and that information will be sent over here. So you got the wind. Uh, you got the turn over here. Uh, the lanes here, David, if you want to help me on this one. Uh, we got one lane. Uh, we're going to go to two lanes. And I think we're making the request to go into three lanes. Is that correct? That's correct. So once you, you have the three lanes here, this will take off the bottleneck uh, that people were talking about. So you got the wind. You got the turn over here. You got this over here. This one will go from one to three lanes uh, itself. And David can give you the, um, uh, the information. And then once you go to loop uh, 20, uh, you're seeing all the work and we'll be talking about that soon. And I want to thank uh, the Department of Transportation because they really have added millions of dollars, federal and state dollars, to make sure that we do those uh, connections there. Uh, at a later time, we'll talk about other things uh, from the Department of Transportation. But I mentioned this because, again, we're partners and we cannot come up with concerns that can be addressed. And we cannot stop the progress because we have certain concerns. And again, again, for those concerns, they will be addressed. The money's there, correct? The money's there, the will's there, we're gonna do that. And hopefully we can go ahead and work on both sides to make sure that the World Trade Bridge stays as the number one inland port. And again, the only reason this works, the only reason this works is because it's a team effort uh, working together. So, Mayor, I want to thank you 
uh, CBP, uh, our family at CBP, the private sector, the Texas Department of Transportation. I don't know if we have GSA here. No? I, I knew the answer, uh, but I had to ask. GSA, you know, I, I encourage GSA to be a little bit more proactive. I encourage GSA uh, to, um, if there is a bureaucratic uh, way of doing it, there's always a faster way of doing it. And, and again, I don't want to go into details here. Uh, but, but again, I ask our GSA friends and Bobby Babcock, I've had a lot of conversations. We just have to think outside the box, guys. We have to think outside the box because if we go according to this bureaucracy, we'll be here for a long, long time. And we cannot afford uh, uh, to wait for a long time. So I, I certainly want to thank GSA for being a partner. I want to thank Bobby Babcock uh, for thinking outside the box. And I encourage his people to think outside the box also. So with that, again, it's been a team, eff a team effort. Thank you so much. And congratulations on all the work that you all have done. Thank you, Congressman Cuellar and DFO Hagerson for your remarks. A continuación, tenemos al segundo regidor de Nuevo Laredo, el señor Daniel Treviño Martínez. Muy buenos días. La conectividad es un factor determinante en el desarrollo y crecimiento de una comunidad más aún cuando impacta a la aduana más importante de América del Norte. Es para mí un honor representar a nuestro presidente Enrique Rivas y externarle su respetuoso saludo a todas y todos los presentes a esta ceremonia de inauguración de la carretera temporal de Far Lane. Me ha pedido hacerles saber de su profundo interés por participar en todo aquello que favorezca la conectividad entre los dos laredos pues es un impulso al compromiso de trabajar, hacer región, fortalecer puentes y derribar muros. Nuestro reconocimiento a todos los actores involucrados en esta solución temporal, que ayudará en el procesamiento de camiones vacíos FAS y disminuirá la espera en las instalaciones de carga. Una solución que será de gran alivio para el flujo de los más de 500 trailers vacíos que se procesan diariamente. Señor Pete Sainz, Mayor de Laredo y funcionarios que hicieron posible esta medida, reciban un sincero saludo y reconocimiento de nuestro alcalde Enrique Rivas Cuellar. Nuestro presidente municipal se encuentra en la capital de Tamaulipas, acompañando al gobernador Francisco García Cabeza Vaca, a quien le hará saber de este paso que dan ustedes para mejorar la conectividad en la región. Muchas gracias. Next, we have from the Laredo Motor Carriers Association, Mr. Ernesto Gaitan. Hello, everyone. It's an honor to be here. Um, we are living in this day and age where time is money. Mr. Fernando said it. Mr. Fernando said it right now, and it's a reality. It's a it's a great thing to see a project of this type come to fruition. Uh, we've been talking about it for some time, and uh, we really want to thank the leadership of Congressman Cuellar of the city of Laredo, the mayor, and CBP for making this a reality. Um, this is going to help the flow of international commerce. It's going to help the flow of traffic, and we're really going to be able to cross things faster and be able to deliver things faster. It helps the whole entire economy of the United States. So I just wanted a quick uh, thank you to everybody that made this happen, and thank you for considering us. Uh, Congressman Cuellar, Mr. Mayor, CVP, Mr. Flores, Mr. Higgerson, uh, Mr. Skinner, uh, we really appreciate that you take us into consideration as we are the end users here. Uh, in fact, I could see an STI truck right there. <laughs> so again, really appreciate everything that you guys do for the city, and we hope that we can continue to help uh, make things better and, and hope to to do more for the city of Laredo like you guys have helped us. So thank you again, appreciate everything that you guys do. Uh, and we're here for you, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gaitan. And now please help me welcome Assistant Director of Field Operations for Trade Operations, Mr. Armando Tabuada Jr. Uh, good morning, everyone. 
first of all, uh, let me start by uh, thanking our congressman, Mr. Cuellar. Thank you for everything, for all the support. And also on behalf of the DFO, Mr. Higgerson, I want to thank everybody for being here. And also on behalf of the board director, Mr. Flores and City of Laredo. One thing that uh, I will stress for everyone, even though uh, we've been talking about this that program for a while, uh, one thing, one message that uh, DFO Higgerson always, always pushed on us on the trade side of the house is, I want to see some dirt flying. I want to see some dirt flying, so I want this project on the road. I know that when we first started this DAP program, the talks with the city, uh, there was some concerns when we started bringing up security, NII, but as you, you can all see in the world that we now live in, security is a big part in CVP's, CVP's mission. Even though we're going to expedite trade, I can assure everyone here that we will also have security in the forefront. So that's one thing that, we, that we're always stressing, and I'm, and I'm happy to say that uh, as far as the Z portal, I know we have a mobile truck right now at this point, if you all can see in, in the back. Uh, it, is, it is actually uh, processing and scanning trucks. Again, we have security, first of all, in, in mind. And um, we do have the Z portal, the main system, that is gonna be delivered in October of this year, 2019. So that with us, so that uh, uh, says a lot about our, our NII program from headquarters. So again, I know that uh, like anything else, there's a lot of promises always being made, but they're actually delivering. So we're very happy to receive the Z portal, scheduling, scheduled to come in October of this year. And we have also some posters, some sketches of the systems that are going to be uh, put in place here on the right. We have also uh, Chief uh, Frank Molino over there. After, after we're done here, I would ask all of you to please uh, make it on down there so you can ask some questions as far as the processing. But again, uh, all in all, we're here to expedite trade. We're always working with, uh, with our, our trade partners. Uh, for example, we have today with us, uh, I want to recognize Port Director Ricardo Diaz with Mexico Customs. They play our major role with, uh, uh, in, uh, in supporting our binational agreements. And Mexico side is always there to help us, especially when we have, we have to implement our business resumption contingency plans. So that's one thing that we always rely on Mexico. Without Mexico, we will not be able to implement our plans and keep the flow of trade moving. Uh, we also have, we're also going to install the multi-MEP multi, uh, portal systems, and uh, it's going to be designated on the right side. We also have designs and pictures for you all to look at. And all in all, all, in all is these systems are designed to process trade quickly. Uh, the officers will, will be able to adjudicate images uh, quickly, and uh, we're, we're also looking forward to uh, taking those images and uh, putting putting them in together with trade with the ACE. So again, uh, with that, uh, I'm just happy. If you can see on your uh, to your right, I'm just happy that uh, this fast lane finally, as as Port Director of Florida stated, uh, came to fruition, and, uh, and and we're happy that it's it's moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tawada. At this time, I'd like to acknowledge the support and assistance from the Laredo Field Office, the Laredo Port of Entry, World Trade Bridge, Congressman Cuellar's office, the City of Laredo, and the Bridge System, whose coordinated efforts made this event possible. For the members of the media, please know that we will be doing the ribbon cutting ceremony. Um, and then our distinguished guests will move on and reconvene at the corner or curve near the exit gate for another photo opportunity. Again, thank you all for your attendance. And at this time, will our distinguished guests move over to the temporary roadway for the official ribbon cutting ceremony.